The Dow aiming for a seventh straight day of gains here. Our first guest is overweight U.S. equities, suggesting better times are ahead. For more on where investors should be looking, we're bringing in Eric Friedman, CIO at U.S. Bank Asset Management Group. Eric, it is good to have you on the show. So you want to be overweight domestic equities, Eric. Maybe we'll, we'll start there. Walk us through why you're constructive on, on, on the U.S. stock market, Eric, and, and where you want to be invested, where you're seeing opportunity. And Josh, I think you did a great job and, and, and Julie in the lead up in terms of why it's really that broadening out effect that we think is going to take hold as we get deeper into this uh, this quarter. So specifically, you're seeing a decent, well-represented consensus. We think actual increased earnings ex estimates, which, which has held. So you're seeing a robust corporate profit picture. You're also seeing some more broad um, participation by sectors. Again, that graphic you had up earlier, just showing just how widespread, if you will, gains are. That's exactly how we want to play this market. We use weakness in April, both across domestic equities as well as commodities. To add to positions, we think that both corporate earnings will accelerate. We also think that inflation will accelerate as we get deeper into this year. So those are two things we believe in. The way that we did it was through equal weight S&P. We think that gives you a more balanced approach. It's uh, it's certainly from a valuation perspective, better than going into the, 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 the obviously the, the general S&P uh, from a straight market cap weighting perspective. So equal weight we think is the right way to approach it. That broadening out effect we think is gonna continue. How will it continue if indeed, as you said, inflation still accelerates, doesn't just stay where it is, but accelerates from here you would think that that could spell some bad news for different areas of the market. Yeah, it's a great point, Julie. I think if you look at the you know the sort of rate of change that we're assuming with inflation, it will be increasing, but not increasing at levels that really cause a significant thwart, if you will, to corporate profit. So we think there's a difference between what's called tail risk hedging within commodities, which is when you have you know oil prices just rally massively where you see really out of control inflationary responses, that's not the market that we think we're gonna get. We do think that, again, with a lot of inflation data coming in next week, there's a potential for some downward pressure in the very near term, but we do think that's gonna pick up as we get deeper into the year. So as long as it doesn't get to a, a massive acceleration, if you will, we think that owning commodities makes some sense and still owning stocks alongside commodities is a way for clients to be to be participating in both, uh, both phenomena. So Eric, you, you want to be overweight domestic equities. I'm just curious what worries you though, Eric, you know, what, what are the risks you would call out, the downside risks to your call? Yeah, a couple of things. One would be some pressure in commercial real estate. You mentioned REITs earlier doing well. And, and Julie, to your point about uh, some of the positives in the fixed income market, there was a decent 30 year bond auction today. And that really has kept the, the rates, uh, if you will, contained. And that's what you're seeing really bolster, if you will, REITs, also utilities. Utilities also has an AI, AI play, as we all have been talking about. But I think the first issue would be if we see some challenges to fixed income, we see some auctions go the wrong way and interest rates turn higher, that could be a challenge for commercial real estate. The trigger we're using is about five and a quarter to five and a half in the US 10 year treasury. We're obviously well below that right now. But again, we've been close to breaching that 5% level a couple times. We obviously did breach it in October of last year. So issue number one, Josh, would be commercial real estate. The second would be challenges to liquidity. Again, we had a liquidity drag, not to get too technical, but whether it was what was happening in the treasury market, whether it was happening with uh, the, the tapering process from the Fed, that's something that we think will reverse in May. So if we don't see, again, concerns on the liquidity side, that's obviously a good thing for our positions. But if we do see some bumps in the night, if you will, with respect to liquidity, that would be an issue. Last thing I'll say is this. If we start to see some of the uh, broadening participation reverse and we rely back on, on large cap tech, that for us would be problematic just because, again, we do think that corporate capex is still there. We think there's still delivery in terms of corporations spending on big data, AI, as well as cyber. Those trends we think are embedded. If those reverse, we'd have some concerns, but those would be three risks that we have to our, our current thought process. But uh, again, this is a market where we're having, uh, we're sort of short on hubris and, and long on, on stops, if you will, making sure that we're taking shots where we have opportunities, but also you know recognizing that there's a very fluid dynamic in front of us, especially as we get closer to the election. Um, and speaking of getting closer to the election, something else you guys are doing that I thought was interesting is buying commodities. And again, just like with stocks, you're looking at, I believe, a broad basket of commodities that could 
rally going into the election. What are some of the dynamics there that could push them higher? Yeah, I think a couple things. You know, one, is, and Julie, to your point, we looked really hard at being more discreet within energy-related equities. That's still a sector we like quite a bit. We thought that having more of a broad-based approach to inflation hedging was the right approach. And I think there's a couple of things going on. Number one is that, of course, we're seeing, given the human tragedies across the world right now, some supply chain disruption, and, and that could certainly continue. Again, our hearts are with uh, those affected. That's certainly more important than financial matters. But that's an area that we think will not be resolved you know, immediately or, or necessarily quickly. The second thing that you're seeing is actually a broadening out of participation by outside of these, these, uh, these borders, if you will. So if you look at what's happening in Europe, if you look at what's happening even in non-Japan Asia, there is some real strength and momentum. Again, everybody knows about China. China is really trying to export their way to growth. They need commodities to make that happen. So that Chinese story, we don't think is going to reverse anytime soon. So if you factor in some broadening participation by Europe, but also some throughput by China, especially liquidity driven throughput by China, that makes commodities a decent place to have some capital. Eric, for fixed income investors who are listening right now as well, what would be your guidance? Yeah, I think a couple of things. One is is it's hard to uh, to move out uh, beyond the first couple of years of the the maturity cycle. We know just psychologically, if you're getting, you know, five five and a half percent on short term fixed income, it's a tough place to move out of. We actually would still emphasize for those clients who are taxable municipal bonds. It's actually a more normally shaped curve. You know, typically the the longer maturities yield more than the shorter maturities. That's actually not happening within government bonds or within corporate bonds, but within municipal bonds across most of this country, that is happening. So we'd actually be extending duration, buying longer maturities within munis, but still hanging out more market weight, if you will, within uh, you know tax exempt bonds. So those are elements that we think will be, will be persistent. So we wouldn't give up on fixed income. We actually really like credit as well. That's a space that we think has been underappreciated. Again, a lot of emphasis on the front end of the government curve, which is appropriate, but we think corporate credit is a great place to be right now. You're getting some incremental yield. Uh, default rates are very, very low. And, and again, that's a spot that we think, uh, you know, with broadening participation in earnings, that obviously helps uh, bondholders as well. So those are very, very important areas for us with clients in the, uh, in the current environment. Lots of ideas for investors. Eric Friedman, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Great to be here.